welcome to the Formula One show, or TF1 for short. My name is Tinis Ferreira, your trusty host and sturdy camel that will lead the way through the endless desert that is Formula One. Now, I hope you enjoyed the previous episode with Lawrence, our resident Ferrari fan. But alas, today you are stuck with me and me alone, so get ready for 15 to 20 minutes, maybe longer, of some awkward jokes and hearing the word basically a lot. But I digress. So, this is the second episode that deals with my top 5 most interesting teammate rivalries in recent memory. We have my final two set of teammates to discuss and let's be honest, the next two on my list were incredibly entertaining to watch and come from two completely different generations of cars. Uh, If you want to get a recap of numbers 3 to 5 on my list, please go and listen to the first part of the series as part of episode 6. And now I think let's stop beating around the bush and jump straight into my number two most interesting teammate pairing. And it might come as a surprise to many that it's not at number one, but alas, my number two goes to Nico Rosberg and Lewis Hamilton. Now, I guess before we start sort of digging into the rivalry and what happened while they were teammates, it's always necessary for some background and especially when talking about these two. So I think the most interesting thing with them was the fact that they actually grew up together in racing. So they were teammates in karting and they were really good friends apparently uh, when they were younger. Um, I think it's also worth mentioning that Hamilton won most of their races when they were juniors and when they were in karting. And um, Rosberg then moved up into motor racing, I think a year or two before Hamilton did, with Rosberg being slightly older. Um, up into when he won GP2, so Rosberg won GP2 in 2005, and then moved up into the Williams Formula 1 team in 2006. And I think he had decent results in that first year in Formula 1. I wouldn't say he was extraordinary, but then again, the Williams car wasn't really that great of a car, and yeah, so he was sort of consigned to the midfield um, in his first year in F1. And then uh, early in the series, I've already mentioned that Hamilton won the GP2 title in 2000, 2006. So in other words, the year after Rosberg won and then moved up to the McLaren team in 2007. Now, just a brief history there. So Hamilton won, uh, came second in the championship in 2007 and won the world championship in 2008 with Rosberg still at Williams up until 2009. Now, at the end of 2009, the Braun team, who won the championship that year, was taken over by Mercedes. And Mr. Rosberg was called to partner a returning Michael Schumacher, who um, incidentally was absolutely useless during his sort of three or four year comeback. I can't even remember how long it was. But yeah, Michael Schumacher just sort of hurt his legacy. But whatever, I'm getting distracted. Um, Yes, so Rosberg and Michael Schumacher were then a new teammate pairing in 2010. Now, Lewis Hamilton competed for the championship between 2010 and 2012 uh, with McLaren, but lost out to Sebastian Vettel during those three years, with Rosberg again sort of consigned to the midfield, with Mercedes never really being a very, very um, serious contender for the front of the the grid, but I guess Rosberg did win a race uh, in 2012 in China with, with Mercedes. Now, come 2013 and shock and horror, Hamilton decided to move to the Mercedes team from the McLaren team, who was in 2012 probably the fastest car on the grid. And many people just thought that he was being absolutely stupid and he was being crazy and basically ruining his chances of ever winning again. But what everybody didn't know and what Hamilton and the you know, top brass at Mercedes knew was that uh, Mercedes was way ahead of the rest of the teams with regards to the new hybrid formula of cars that was slated to start racing in 2014 with Mercedes really spearheading the developments uh, for that new set of regulations. So, I mean, obviously in hindsight, we can now discuss about what a clever move that was from Hamilton's side, but... At that stage, people were literally thinking Hamilton was being a lunatic. In any case, so Rosberg obviously stayed on at Mercedes with Michael Schumacher announcing his second and hopefully last retirement at that stage uh, at Mercedes. And then Hamilton joined Rosberg for the 2013 season. Now, Rosberg seemed relatively pleased at first, um, but I have to assume that he must have been slightly nervous about Hamilton, who by that stage was a 
a known superstar in Formula One and probably the fastest on the grid in terms of raw speed. So that must have seemed like a quite a, a, an intimidating new teammate to contend against, especially in sort of a team that Rosberg helped to build up up to up to that point. So I guess just with some context now provided, we can now discuss these two at Mercedes where they raced against each other from 2013 to 2016. Now, the first season in 2013 was, I guess, pretty tame and pretty boring from their perspective, with uh, Mercedes not really having a championship-winning car, which uh, is probably why the relationship between Hamilton and Rosberg was portrayed as being very buddy-buddy and, you know, the two old friends from the young days reuniting in the Formula 1 team to basically take over the world, and everybody was umming and eyeing and finding it all too cute that these two these two drivers are now teammates and just, you know, reminiscing about the past and how they enjoyed being in each other's company. Um, yeah, just in summary, Hamilton won the Hungarian Grand Prix that year and he came fourth in the championship with 189 points and Rosberg sixth with 171 points. So basically one zip to Hamilton after the first season. Now in 2014, and as I've mentioned before, surprise, surprise, Mercedes had a car so much better than everyone else that it was clear from the start that it's going to be a two-horse race for the uh, Drivers' Championship with the Constructors' Championship basically already won after the first few races. Now, again, after the first, you know, one or two races, it was relatively tame between the two, you know, no real drama, everybody getting along nicely, enjoying the fact that they now have this new super speedy car. But then came the Bahrain Grand Prix, which is, uh, I guess, probably one of the best wheel-to-wheel races you'll ever watch. Um, if possible, please go and check it out if you haven't yet. It, I'm sure there's highlights on YouTube and I'll see if I can share it uh, on my Twitter account. Hamilton and Rosberg going all out with Hamilton in the lead and Rosberg in second on newer and faster tyres, giving his all to overtake. Um, but Hamilton was absolutely pushing the envelope to stay ahead and to eventually win the race. Rosberg was very gracious, you know, they had like a little play fights um, in Park Ferme. But Rosberg, yeah, he was quite gracious in defeat, but later on, uh, much later on, actually admitted that. That was probably the race which, which created the tension, initial tension between them, um, at least from his perspective. Now, after that, Hamilton duly took control of the championship uh, up until Monaco, where the second sort of big flashpoint during that season occurred, where um, after setting his flying lap in qualifying three or the final part of qualifying, uh, Rosberg locked his tires and basically drove off into the runoff area or um, I actually don't know exactly what to call it, but basically sort of parked his car just sort of behind one of the corners, and which obviously brought out the yellow flags. Now, for those who don't know, if there's yellow flags, you're not allowed to set your fastest lap or your fastest sector um, in the area where the, the, the form, where the yellow flags are waved. So Hamilton, therefore, wasn't able to actually set his fast qualifying lap, and Hamilton immediately suspected foul play. Now, Rosberg denied it completely and vehemently and said, no, 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 it was an honest mistake. He just locked up the brakes, and but Hamilton wasn't buying it. Um, you know, as an aside, Rosberg wasn't penalized or found guilty of anything, but, um, you know, this set the wheels in motion for Hamilton to be, you know, angry as well, and just, you know, to rub salt into the wound, Rosberg won the race the next day. Now, the tensions were high all of a sudden. You know, you could sort of see Mercedes were trying to manage the situation by trying to still portray them as being, um, you know, good friends. But it was just very uncomfortable that whole period where you could see they really didn't want to be near each other. They didn't really want to speak to each other. But they were sort of forced to be in all of these situations where they had to interact. Now, the next, next sort of interesting race during this season came during the Hungarian Grand Prix where Hamilton had to start from the back after a fire and qualifying on his car with Rosberg in pole position. Now, Hamilton fought his way very brilliantly through the field into third place with Rosberg in fourth after a second pit stop. Now, Rosberg was obviously on much newer tires and Hamilton sort of trying to manage his race a bit more. And Rosberg drove up to the back of Hamilton and then asked 
the team to tell Hamilton to let him pass. And Hamilton just point blank refused. He told the team that if Rosberg is so fast, he can drive up to him and overtake him in the proper way. Which, given that the Hungarian track, so the Hungar the Hungara ring, is a very, very difficult track to overtake on, and Rosberg wasn't able to. So, basically, what then ensued was Hamilton and Rosberg being in third and fourth place, respectively, with Hamilton coming third and Rosberg coming fourth. Rosberg obviously being very upset that Hamilton didn't listen to his team and that he decided to just do what he wanted, and Rosberg feeling that a race win was technically robbed from him. Now, Hamilton came back and said, no, listen, he is fighting for a championship here with Nico Rosberg. He will not let Nico Rosberg through just for fun and games or just because the team asked. And I guess he was applauded from some areas and criticized from other areas in the Formula One paddock. But whatever, that's what he decided to do. Now, probably the biggest thing that happened during that season was in Spa, in the Belgian Grand Prix, where um, Rosberg, I think, was on pole and Hamilton overtook him in the first lap. Rosberg then decided to come back on the second lap and then, this, well, I wouldn't say decided, but refused to yield to Hamilton having the inside line, clipping Hamilton's rear tire with his front wing. Hamilton gets a puncture. Rosberg takes the lead. Hamilton retires from the race. Rosberg, I think, came second uh, behind Alan Ricciardo and massive drama. Now, Rosberg got booed on the podium by all of the, the, the Belgians, which, I mean, for Belgians, it's quite a controversial thing to do. Hamilton and Rosberg had sort of a debrief with Hamilton coming out furious after meeting with the team, basically telling to the press that Rosberg did it on purpose, that he did it to make a point, and Hamilton basically went on a rant to, you know, bes besmirch Rosberg's name and to make him look like the villain in this whole situation, and, I mean, he was quite successful in his attempts because, basically, for the rest of the season, whenever Nico Rosberg stepped on a podium, he was booed by the crowd, which is, I mean, for someone as sort of mellow and level-headed as Rosberg was was quite surprising. And it must have been very, um, you know, disquieting for him to experience. And I think that sort of led to the, Ham uh, the Rosberg Championship Challenge diminishing over the final stages of the 2014 season with Hamilton winning the championship in Abu Dhabi uh, at the last race of the season. Um, in fairness to Rosberg, he was very gracious in defeat and really nicely um, came up to the podium or the podium room to congratulate Hamilton in person. So, in other words, two zip to Hamilton after two seasons as teammates. Now, the third season that they drove together was 2015, and to be honest, this was by far and away the least interesting one where Hamilton won the championship with a few races to spare. So I, I'm going to, for the benefit of you all and just for time, skip this, this season. If you want to go read up about the 2015 season, please be my guest. But yeah, Hamilton was leading 3-0 in the teammate battle after the 2015 season. Now, in 2016, Rosberg returns. He wins the first four races on the trot and entered the Spanish Grand Prix with a 43-point lead over Lewis Hamilton. Now, this was, again, a very interesting race and definitely a major flashpoint in their overall story of, of their relationship uh, as teammates, with Hamilton being on pole, Rosberg overtaking Hamilton in the first corner, and immediately after that, basically, Hamilton tried to overtake again, Rosberg closed the door, and they crashed into each other, causing them both to retire. After the race, they sort of blamed each other, but went to the stewards, and the stewards basically classified this as a racing incident with no one getting in trouble about it. Now, tensions, I'm assuming, was probably at an all-time high, although I think they decided to play it down to the press. But Hamilton sort of intriguingly said that, you know, in a few years when, he, when we read his book about, you know, that period in his career, he's probably going to tell us exactly what was happening during that stage. Now, a few races later, Rosberg then decided to drive into Hamilton at the Austrian Grand Prix and uh, was quickly awarded two penalty points for his efforts, so Rosberg was quite reckless there. And then the whole season that year swayed this way and that way with, you know, Rosberg building a lead, Hamilton getting it back. Uh, it's just sort of really a momentum shift from one race to the next. And probably the two defining races during that season was the Malaysian Grand Prix, where Hamilton was way ahead of everybody else in first place. 
um, with his engine basically blowing up, causing him to retire. So losing 25 points to Rosberg there. And then lastly, at the Abu Dhabi Grand Prix, where over the last few laps of the race, Rosberg basically had to finish, I think, third place or higher to win the championship. And Hamilton was in the lead. Rosberg was in second place. And Hamilton deliberately drove slowly the whole time in order to see if he can't force Sebastian Vettel to overtake Nico Rosberg so that Rosberg can be delegated to third place to maybe see if he can't win the championship that way. But alas, it was not to be for Lewis Hamilton and Rosberg won his first championship by five points, which I guess in hindsight, if you take into account that Hamilton had to retire with a 25-point loss at the Malaysian Grand Prix, just shows how what of a big momentum shift that that race was in the overall championship and the the context of the whole battle between the two. Now, Rosberg won his first championship. He was obviously over the moon and then promptly retired from Formula 1 five days later. So a bit of an abrupt end to that rivalry. And I think we were all very sad that we weren't able to sort of see Hamilton trying to take back his crown in the 2017 season. So I think the tale of the tape... Um, Hamilton had more wins at 36 versus Rosberg's 22. Hamilton had more pole positions at 35 versus 29. Hamilton had more podiums, 55 versus 50. And Hamilton had more overall points over the four years with 1,334 versus 1,195. And then also Hamilton outperformed Rosberg in three out of the four seasons that they drove together. So I think it's clear to say that Hamilton won their teammate battle fair and square. However, what really made this such an interesting and fascinating rivalry was just the fact that it was always those two head-to-head at the front and all the history between the two was really fascinating to sort of see how they came up through the ranks of the racing world and then into Formula 1 where they you know, were made out as friends and basically once they were teammates, made a point to drive into each other more often than not between 2014 and 2016. And the really interesting thing was just Rosberg, after having retired, when he described the lengths that he went to to beat Hamilton during that season where he stopped cycling to lose leg muscles so that he can, you know, win half of a tenth of lap time over a race. And he basically had this incredible mental coach and sort of meditation regime that he had where he would focus on you know his goal and he would focus on beating and winning the race I mean just Rosberg was so invested that year and basically poured everything that he can into beating Hamilton and you know it paid off him at the end but I guess it sort of shows that you know at the end of the day Hamilton I guess was just the more naturally faster driver where you know, that ultimate level of speed was more accessible to him in compa- comparison to Rosberg, where Rosberg really had to work hard and, you know, squeeze every last drop of speed out of himself and out of the car. So, yeah, um, I think a super, super interesting pairing. And I think for most of you guys would have probably been number one on any of these lists. But unfortunately for me, they're only number two because my number one choice is Fernando Alonso and Lewis Hamilton when they were McLaren teammates in 2007. Now, I'll admit, uh, this is slightly a sentimental favorite, but I mean, these two amazing drivers against each other, I just couldn't resist. Now, also worth mentioning that they were only teammates for one season, so in 2007, in Hamilton's first year as a a driver. Um, I feel in terms of drama over the year, they were completely unmatched by any of the other pairings that is on this list just because of, you know, the extent of sort of blackmail and negotiations and underhanded tactics that were employed. Um, Just a bit of context again, Hamilton joined the team in 2007 in his first year as Formula 1, with Hamilton joining the team that year as well, but uh, with Alonso, apologies, joining the team in 2007 as well, but as the two-time defending world champion at Renault. Now, I'm going to provide a short rundown of sort of the build-up to all of the tension and all of the drama. In their first race together in Australia, Hamilton overtook Alonso at the start of their first race. Um, sort of a massive declaration of intent from him, with Alonso later on sort of getting the position back and then placing higher than Hamilton in the end. Now, interesting to note, and I've mentioned this before, is Hamilton then went on a streak of nine podiums in a row so he basically was on the podium for his first nine races which is quite an impressive feat 
And then that sort of led to Alonso being consistently frustrated by his rookie teammates that won't go away or give him the chance to be the number one in the team as he expected to be. Now, interestingly, Hamilton ended up leading the championship as a rookie after winning the Canadian Grand Prix and the United States Grand Prix, with Alonso getting more and more frustrated and thinking that he was being undermined by the McLaren team, with McLaren um, basically favoring the British driver that was driving for their team. Obviously, McLaren vehemently denied this. Now, kudos to Alonso. He came back over the next two races, um, which then basically led to the race that led to a complete meltdown in Hamilton and Alonso's relationship, the Hungarian Grand Prix. Now, firstly, I think Hamilton sort of to stake his claim uh, in the team, refused to let Alonso go ahead of him during qualifying. So basically, Alonso, um, it was decided by the team beforehand that Alonso would be ahead of Hamilton in their qualifying run. So just sort of being the lead McLaren car in terms of order of, of setting their laps. While Hamilton refused to let Alonso pass, and Alonso was shooketh, he was furious, um, and he duly then decided to go and park in the McLaren pit box for a long period of time um, after having his uh, tires changed and getting a quick refuel, basically leaving Hamilton, to unab- leaving Hamilton unable to complete his final flying lap, which then meant Alonso took pole, and I think Hamilton was second on the grid. Then, unfortunately, this was against the rules what Alonso did, so ha- Alonso got penalized, and Hamilton then won the race the next day. Now, all of this was sort of just a screen for the actual drama that was happening behind the scenes with, you know, just as a bit of background, um, it was found that McLaren, the team, was actually in possession of a massive amount of Ferrari documents outlining, you know, how the car worked and how, you know, just basically how the Ferrari car was put together, which was obviously very, very um, uh, advantageous to the McLaren team, given that Ferrari was their main competitor during that season. And interestingly, it came out then that Alonso knew about this. So after the Hungarian Grand Prix, after all of the drama, he threatened Ron Dennis, the McLaren boss at the time, and basically told him that if Dennis does not control Hamilton, he will go and make the information public. So then what Dennis did is he promptly went and actually testified uh, to this fact during the second hearing, you know, by there's basically like an independent arbitrator that that uh, were trying sort of this whole espionage case. And uh, well, this sort of evidence provided by Ron Dennis then led to McLaren being disqualified from the Constructors' Championship and the largest fine in Formula One history. And uh, strangely, I guess, you know, I don't actually know why they allowed this. But in any case, the drivers, so Alonso and Hamilton, could still compete for the Drivers' World Championship, with both of them fighting tooth and nail until the last race in Brazil, with Hamilton leading the championship with four points over Alonso. Now, the last race was a heartbreaker for Lewis Hamilton, with gearbox issues and Alonso not being, I guess, fast enough overall um, to beat Ferrari during the Brazilian Grand Prix, with Kimi Raikkonen from Ferrari winning the championship by one point over Hamilton and Alonso, who were tied for second place. Now, just as an uh, interesting aside, Hamilton ended up being classified as the official championship runner-up over the year due to both Hamilton and Alonso having four race wins, but Hamilton having one more second place than what Alonso did. So that was sort of the tiebreaker that the FIA used to determine the second place in the world championship. Now, I guess we can go to the tail of the tape, where in terms of pole positions, Hamilton beat Alonso 6 versus 2. They were tied on race wins, as mentioned just now, for each. They were tied for per number of podiums, 12 each. Uh, in that, Technically, in terms of championship points, they were tied 109 each. Um, the qualifying head-to-head, Hamilton won 10 to 7. And the race head-to-head, Alonso won 10 to 7. So as you guys can see, this was an incredibly close and intense fight the whole season through with almost nothing separating two of the greatest drivers to ever race in Formula 1, which is, I think, the reason that I put this as my number one on the list. We will forever have this amazing season to look back on with the upstart rookie and the experienced champion going tooth and nail with an incredible amount of drama 
and intrigue thrown in. So there go my top five. If you don't agree, go and tell me in the comments or go and tweet me. I am on Twitter as at TF1show. Thanks again for listening and please subscribe, comment and leave your thoughts. See you again for the Spanish Grand Prix. Bye.